Hello and welcome to Nationwide. I am Ifoma Ojinta. And we begin Nationwide today with security matters. A three-day meeting on strategic management attended by high-ranking military officials and members of various Nigerian ministries and agencies has taken place in Abuja aimed at charting a new level of strategic leadership across the country. Defense correspondent Naja Tutijani reports. High-ranking officers who have played pivotal roles in safeguarding the nation's security. The occasion serves to also recognize individuals who have made significant contributions the to the nation's defense and public service. And the essence is to espouse and show forth all the tenets of strategic leadership it's aimed at producing results in the society and having impact. Uh, ultimately is to make Nigeria better. And uh, we'll try our best to formulate policies and strategies that will take Nigeria to a greater and higher level. And our individual places of work, our homes, because um, you need strategy, practically everything you do in life. The occasion also serves to emphasize the importance of unity and collaboration among the armed forces and civil authorities in achieving national security objectives. Leadership has direction, has view, has a vision. So walking through that vision and mobilizing people to achieve that goal is what makes a leader different from the manager. Strategy is about leadership that takes you to that destination and it works its talk. The event concluded with a collaborative working session where participants engaged in discussions on vital strategic issues, including national security, economic development, and technology integration to improve defense capabilities. The event is also aimed at rethinking the way leadership is handled in government agencies. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. The Nigerian Air Force has formally apologized to members of Rukubi community in Doma, local government area of Nasarawa State, where an airstrike claimed the lives of Heathers and their livestock on January 24, 2023. The reconciliatory move follows the conclusion of investigations and comes exactly one year after the incident which the Cattle Breeders Association, Miyeti Allah, described as a blast coming from the air while members were offloading cattle from vehicles. The Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar, who met families and survive, surviving victims of the accidental airstrike, said having reviewed the incident's report concerning the airstrikes that we are undertaking January 24, 2023, in pursuit of terrorists, Near Rukubi, innocent civilians may have erroneously been killed or injured in the process. Key players in the security sector say the NAV conciliatory move signals accountability and respect for human rights. Meanwhile, the fight against the common enemy of Nigeria requires the whole of society approach which encourages a consistent means of mobilization and risk reduction policy in combating insecurity head-on. Commander Nigerian Army Corps of Artillery Contagora Major General Marcos Kenge gave this advice at the Combined West Africa Social Activities WASA of the Corps, the Headquarters Nigerian Army Training Center and the 311 Artillery Regiment Contagora Cantonment Niger State. Mokhtarwo will complete the report. In the social event, Major General Maskur Skanya says the contemporary security challenges bedeviling the country cannot be addressed by the armed forces alone. The Army General adds that the armed forces require intelligence information from all segments of the society to address the security challenges. All stakeholders and the entire Nigeria society, we need their support. We have to come together so that we can address this issue of insecurity in order to defeat our common enemies. The social event, which dates back to many centuries ago, brought the family of officers and soldiers together in a social and conducive atmosphere, dining and whining. Cultural activities were performed, as well as pleasantries exchanged with their host communities. This event 
is known for his peculiar opportunity to showcase the beauty of our culture and traditions. They have made a very good display and um, demonstrated a very good symbol of unity among Nigerians. The combined West African social activities was uh, by the headquarters Nigerian Army Corps of Artillery, the headquarters Nigerian Army Training Center, and the 311 Artillery Regiment Contagora Barracks signifies the end of their 2023 training activities, ushering in the 2024 training year in the Army formations and the unit. In Contagora, Mukhtar Uwu, NTA News. Three West African countries under our military rule, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, have agreed to leave the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, in a joint statement read out on Niger National Television this Sunday. The three states said they are leaving the regional bloc immediately. The statement read by Colonel Amado Abdramani, Niger Junta spokesman said that the people of uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger are regretful and disappointed with the actions of the ECOWAS, stating that the, Eco the ECOWAS has um, drifted from the ideals of its founding fathers and the spirit of pan Africanism established 49 years ago. Colonel Amado ECOWAS said ECOWAS failed to assist the three states in their existential fight against terrorism and insecurity. Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tarid Labaja is asking troops assigned to keep peace in Mongu not to relent until they accomplish their mission in the area. This was while well assessing level of destruction in Mongu. Rain Red Sylvanus Lot has details. The recent attack in Mongu led to wanton destruction of lives and property of citizens. Worried by these incessant attacks, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tawhid Lagbaja, was in Mangu to assess the security situation with a view to finding workable solutions to the challenges. After being briefed by the Commander Operation Safe Heaven and GOC 3 Div on the security situation, the Chief of Army Staff then inspected the affected areas to assess the level of destruction. Addressing the troops, Lieutenant General Lagbaja charged them to be disciplined and focused while expressing confidence in their ability to handle the task ahead. To manage any crisis or conflict situation, it has to be a delicate balance of three major actors of the government, the people, and the military. The military is meant to create an enabling environment for other elements of national power to come into play. The military has been on the plateau for some time. And so we need the appearance of other elements of national power to bring a lasting and sustainable peace to plateau. We have said this, we are discussing with other critical stakeholders to ensure that that is done. Earlier, the chief of army staff was at the government house where he met with Governor Caleb Mutfang on the security situation. In Joss, Rinred Silvanus Lot, NTA News. Still talking security, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyesong Wiki, has directed area council chairmen to hold monthly security meetings in their domain. The minister gave this directive during the last leg of the security town hall meeting in Kuje Onoze Yakubo reports. Difficult terrain coupled with the deplorable condition of access and community roads, as well as mining activities, are what the criminal elements are taking advantage of to perpetrate their activities. It is in the light of this that the council chairman and the government of Kuji are appealing for the quick intervention in this regard. As a leader who does not compromise quality and standards on all your projects, we passionately appeal that our observation be considered and our design be maintained so that the road can be dualized. Sir. We have some terrain, terrible terrain in Kuji area castle. The whole place there is no access road. Honestly speaking, Mr. Minister, we need your urgent attention. FCT Minister Yeson Wiki says security is one of the priorities of President Bola Tinubu's administration, hence the need to enhance infrastructure development in communities. When I saw the file of Arab contractors, I didn't know it was the route from the, from the express. I said no. Keep it aside, I'm not sure of this contract. But now that I know it is correct, 
I will go back and revisit the fine. If you don't hold regular security, unit, you will not know the problems. So you must, as a matter of, uh, of at the worst in every month. He, however, appealed to the informants to turn a new leaf or be ready to face the consequences of the action. Onuzi Akubu, NT News. And for more stories on Nationwide, let's now join Adiola in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Adiola. Good to see you. Ifoma, welcome to Lagos. The Nigeria Customs Service says it will continue to harness the specialized expertise of other security agencies in the interest of enhancing its capability to fulfilling core mandates. The Comptroller General of Customs, Bashir Adewale Adeniyi, stated this in Lagos while showcasing more than 56 kilograms of cocaine and 955 kilograms of marijuana intercepted at the Tinkan Island port. Michael Olaleye reports. Being the second busiest port in Nigeria, Tinkan Island is usually a target for smuggling of illicit drugs and other banned items. Unlike in previous attempts, the customs has proven its ability to keep an eagle eye as seen in the case of this consignment containing 56.3 kilograms of cocaine valued at 2.4 billion naira and 955 kilograms of Colorado with street value of 4.3 billion naira. Five pistols, 455 rounds of live ammunition and several empty pistol magazines were seized with South Africa and Canada, identified as countries of imports. The individuals linked to these seizures have not been disclosed totally as investigation into the criminal network are still ongoing. Our pursuit for justice underscores the determination to dis dismantle the networks enabling these criminal acts and reinforcing our dedication to upholding the rule of law and safeguarding the security and well-being of Nigerian people. The Controller General of Customs singled out the progressive partnership with the NDLEA, which has resulted in suppressing drug network. The chairman of the NDLEA, who was represented, believes the seizure is a testimony that the seaport is equally under surveillance. This level of cooperation between NDLEA and Customs, as well as other security agencies and port stakeholders, is a strong signal to drug cartels that our ports and indeed, Nigeria will not be a, a haven for them for their criminal business. Both agencies use the platform to reaffirm commitment to deepening collaboration towards fostering a civil society. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Checking the menace of corruption, which has become a national pandemic, will bring an end to fraud bribery, insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, and other vices. These were the submission of speakers at the 2024 Prayer for the Nation organized by Fatima Charity Foundation in Lagos. Bolaji Akim reports that the annual event was put together to commit the nation into God's care. <laughs> This special prayer session set the tone for the 2024 Prayer for the Nation program organized by Fatima Charity Foundation. President of the Foundation Chief, Mrs. Bintu Fatima Tinumbu, who is also the Yaludi of Lagos, said the Foundation is committed to the well-being of the country and its leaders and the need to come before Almighty God every year for divine direction and mercy upon the nation and its leaders cannot be overemphasized. In their separate lectures, the guest speakers unanimously agreed that corruption and insecurity are threats to economic and sustainable development of the country, while commitment of purpose, service, service, and dedication from both leadership and followers is the only antidote needed for the country. A disease that affected the reason of mankind caused by ignorance. He said, the law is your heart. <coughs> corruption is our heart. The art has been negatively educated to thought. The chairman of the Federal Character Commission, Dr. Muhiba Dankaka, 
informed the gathering that the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu is determined and will do everything possible to eradicate corruption in the country. We should just pray for our president, especially with the prayers point that we put forward today. Corruption will be something of the past in the next few months. If everyone do all they could, privately, secretly, in your home, in your office, your mosque, in your church, I'm sure this new administration will get to the highest level. Since inception, the Fatima Charity Foundation has been in the forefront of providing relief to orphanages, widows, and the less privileged. The 2024 prayer for the nation is the 13th edition to be organized by the foundation. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NCA News. And we are done from Lagos for now. More reports on nationwide will be coming from Chineye in Enugu after this break. Do stay with us. We will work diligently to make sure every Nigerian feels the impact. Thank you so much for staying on. Welcome to Enugu. Enugu State Government is to partner the International Organization on Migrants, IOM, to ensure safe return, settlement, and reintegration of irregular and stranded migrants from the state. Governor Peter Mba gave the assurance while playing host to a delegation from the organization in Nigeria. Chika Ubu reports. The quest for greener pastures and in some cases proper medical care is the reason many, especially young people, are migrating to developed countries like Europe and America. This trend has continued despite the prevailing dangers and challenges associated with the journey. Those involved in illegal migration investigations have revealed are more often vulnerable to trafficking and deportation. It is against this backdrop that the state government is determined to work with the International Organization of Migration. The governor revealed that they would work to help the IOM secure a zonal office in the state so that such returnees could be rehabilitated in the state rather than being taken to other states. We are more than happy to welcome the back have a lot of programs that we have also designed as a state to cater for the welfare and well-being of uh, our people. Earlier, the IOM chief of mission said the organization is working on developing avenues on how to help Nigerians to migrate abroad regularly with proper conditions for safe jobs and dignity in their host countries. This, he said, will help discourage irregular migrations. As an organization, we have prioritized the resilience and the support and protection to those so for years we have worked in with some of our offices abroad in other countries where they have identified any new people who were stranded. Both parties are optimistic that the sighting of an office in Enugu State will help in the reintegration and rehabilitation of young people molested or deported from all the countries. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. Addressing discrepancies surrounding land administration and issuance of certificate of occupancy topped the agenda of a one-day public hearing organized by the Enugu State House of Assembly. Chimaroke Ugu reports. The bill to establish the new Enugu City Management Agency and that which seeks to establish state geographic information services were presented before relevant stakeholders, community leaders and the public for inputs. Suggestions on how to decongest the capital city, drive rural development, create employment and attract investors in the state, while increasing the GDP of the state, among other things, received accelerated hearing. Uh, individuals with a strong external foundation Regardless of the exact number of years in the specific field, can bring valuable insights, fresh perspectives, and dedication to 
Exodus. The chairman promised to work in the interest of the public, putting into consideration the suggestions, consent, and opinions raised in the public hearing. They, they contributed, they made some observations which are very critical. So the committee will look into those observations, those uh, suggestions that they made, and also impute in a very broad words. As long as those points are for all of them shall be, you know, taken care of during the final stage of the bid before passage. The committee assured that the bills when passed into law will be independent from the existing laws of the state. Inenugu, Chimaroke, Ugu, NTA News. And those are the stories from Enugu. We will now rejoin Ifoma in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Hey, thanks, Chimaye. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has arrested a Brazil returnee, Ude Chuku Ekene Theophilus, at the Mutala Mohammed International Airport in Keja, Lagos, for ingesting 70 wraps of cocaine. Zinred Dengun reports on these and other activities of the NDLEA. The suspect was arrested during clearance of passengers at the Mutula Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos, on board Ethiopian Airlines from Sao Paulo, Brazil, en route Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. While he was interrogated by the officials of the NDLEA, Udechuku said he ingested the consignment in Brazil and was to discharge everything at the airport in Addis Ababa, but could only excrete 15 pellets which he handed over to another member of his syndicate before his connecting flights to Nigeria. In a related development, at the Lagos airport, NDLEA also intercepted 12 cartons of tramadol containing over 500,000 pills. The effort was as a result of the joint examination with other agencies. In Kano, the agency also arrested a suspect known as Shanwilu Idris at Gada Tamburawa area of the state with a large number of cannabis. NDLEA also arrested Musa Galadima along Gumbe Bauchi Road with cannabis. Similar operations was also conducted along the Lyonzana area of Just Plata State, which involved a suspect known as Aminu Wanta. The agency has declared wanted the former beauty queen Oluwa Damilola Adenoye, who escaped her residence during the operations of the staff of the agency, following credible intelligence that she deals in illicit substances. While reaffirming its commitment towards fighting drug trafficking, the agency is calling on the public to continue to give them maximum support towards fighting all forms of illicit trafficking. President Bola Tinubu has directed the Ministry of Agriculture to ensure that the country remains food secured. The Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari, said this when he hosted Niger and Sokoto State Governors in Abuja. Musa Aliu has the details. Niger is the largest state in Nigeria in terms of land mass, housing more than a million hectares of irrigable land. The state is also ranked the largest producer of rice paddy in Nigeria and also a leading producer of yam. However, in the areas of processing and export, the state is lagging behind. This therefore necessitated a visit by the state governor to the Federal Minister of Agriculture seeking for partnership. Niger State the governor told the minister the that he is targeting a million hectares of land this year for cultivation of assorted food in the state. And we're deploying irrigation pumps. Some of them are renewable energy, understanding the need for us to reduce carbon emission. We have attracted over a billion dollar investment in agricultural mechanization and technology in the last six months. Sokoto State Governor was also in the ministry decried how the activities of bandits are affecting agricultural activities in part of the state. He explained some of the measures his administration is taking to ensure farmers in the state increase productivity. That our major concern 
And so, as far as food production is concerned, is the issue of arm um, banditry affecting some part of the state. There is no way with our security, farmers can go to the farm. The Minister of Agriculture says the ministry is mandated to ensure availability of food in the country and seeks for state governor's support. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security is dedicated to implementing stringent measures in the forthcoming dry, wet season farming for rice, maize and cassava to ensure transparent distribution of agro inputs and targeting genuine farmers. Collaboration with states, local governments, traditional rulers, NGOs, and relevant MDAs and farmer associations will be crucial in achieving this goal. Sokoto State is recognized as one of the leading states in vegetable and livestock production in the country. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. The introduction of the Special National Economic Livelihood Support Intervention for victims of 2022 flood and vulnerable persons across the country by the federal government, to say the least, rekindled the hope of victims. National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has executed the program across the 36 states, including Anambra and the FCT. Ilyasu Yakubu completes the report. Items distributed include rice, maize and yam seedlings, food and non-food items, grinding and sewing machines. Other items include farm inputs like fertilizer, pesticides and knapsack sprayers for farmers and artisans, as well as rehabilitation of the victims to help them regain some means of livelihood. Olushegun Afolayan, NEMA's coordinator of the program in Anambra State, says the agency, in collaboration with the Anambra State Emergency Management Agency, have been working to ensure equitable distribution of the items to the beneficiaries. He said this federal government initiative has greatly impacted the lives of the people who had completely lost hope when the incident occurred. Everywhere we went to, we educate them to make maximum use of it, not to sell the equipment, to use it for the purpose of which it was given to them, so as to enhance the food basket of this Adambra state, and for them to be able to have an income for spending for their household. Representative of the Alhambra state government thanked the federal government for the show of solidarity and alleviating the plight of the people. Ilias Yakubu, NTA News. Minister of Works, David Umahi, has re-emphasized the need for state governments to constitute a special task force to enforce discipline on individuals that sabotage the efforts of the federal government in providing quality roads for the people. He said this during his recent tour of the Enugu Patakot Expressway to ascertain the extent of work done by contractors. He formed Rukoli reports. Contractors handling the 56.1 kilometer Omwaiha Tower, a bus section of the Enugu Patakot Expressway, went back to site following an appeal by the Minister of Works. Dave Omahi, during his inspection to our finished and ongoing federal roads project in the southeast. When I see their commitment in the removal of uh, refuse and uh, using sharp sand to do the filling, I was so impressed. I know we have a problem of funding, but I begged him to please come back because of the sufferings of the people. Omahi, however, frowned at what is described as unruly behaviors of some traders on that road axis. You see uh, people trading, you know, I think half of the traders in Aba are having their, you know, shops right on the main road. And this is uh, very disgusting. The Federal Controller of Works in Abe State said they are transforming the old median from the Aba Potako station into main carriageway to accommodate the heavy movement of trucks on that road axis. From Tower to Osisoma Bridge, you have to you have dual carriageway. After the after the bridge, you now have four carriageways. We we'll just have less than three just about three kilometers to finish this one, and then about five kilometers to finish the above bound carriageway. Before this road is uh, 
That's the, the, the condition of this road before. No, it's not good at all. But as of now, the road, as I've seen the road now, within a short time, any, every person, any person where we this place, we know that government has changed. I'm very, very happy because when the road is completed, development will come. It is expected that the road will be completed before the end of the second quarter of this year, 2024. In Omar here, a former Ndu Okoli, NTA News. And to bring dividends of democracy to all residents of Ibadan by the current administration of Governor Sheyi Makinde, the Adegbayu Road in Ibadan, the state capital, has been inaugurated. Ayomiko Ajibola reports that his Oshun state counterpart, Ademola Adeneke, inaugurated the road. To realize 8.2 kilometer Agudigate Old Ife Road, Alakia Adegba Yudua Carriageway has a median of 1.2 m width with a shoulder of 2.75 m and a walkway of 2 m on each side. It also includes pavement structure of sub base, cross stone base, 50 mm asphaltic binder course, installation of street lights, and construction of an underpass bridge at Onipepeye area of Ibadan. Inaugurating the road project. Governor Adimola Adeliki commended his Oyo State counterpart, Shiyima Kindi, for his vision for the expansion of Oyo State economy through investment in infrastructural development, noting that his state is already taking cue from his vision. Governors of souls are keeping alive the great memories of our founding leaders. The completion of this project is a further testament of our commitment to expanding the Ohio State economy through road projects. Helia, Commissioner for Public Works and Transport, Professor Dawood Shangudui, noted that Governor Makede has been able to complete an unprecedented road of over 184 kilometer of road projects across all the geopolitical zones in the state, in Ibadan, Ayomiku, Ajibola, NTA News. Experts say sanitation is one of the ways to improving the health of individuals and community through minimizing human contact with waste hazards. It is against this background that Cross River State Government, government strategies aim at penalizing non-compliance in the state's wide monthly exercise, promising to reward total compliance next month. Achibong Basi brings us details. These market women who are visibly alerted by the governor pass you to policy thrust, especially as regards restoring a clean, green and serene cross river state, chant songs of appreciation. He's a governor! Please say to a governor! Oh, you are doing the best work, the good work. May God bless you. The road construction, the, the potholes, the ceiling, it is, we love it. We, we want it more and more. Prince Atu is a clean man. And we like what you do in the Calabar. Uh, very good, very good. I do what I say. Okay. So the women, they are obey, they are comply about the, the sanitation. And also, they are also promised to also be part and parcel of um, the sanitation to keep the cross river state neat and clean. Addressing the traders at one of the popular markets in Calabar, the Commissioner for Environment, Moses Osogi, explains that a clean and healthy environment is important for the reduction of sanitary related diseases and preventable deaths while increasing economic productivity compliance level is very high i, I could say that I, I am highly elated we're going to give the best street in the next sanitation exercise the best cleanest uh, uh, street in calabar will take an award we are here to support the ministry of environment working in collaboration with the Ministry of environment to make sure our environment is clean some of those who defaulted during the exercise were arrested by the tax force team who went around the city of calabar with the commissioner to supervise the exercise in Calabar, Achibon Basi, NTA News. We will now take more reports on nationwide from our Medugri Network Center with Abubakar as our guide. Hello, Abubakar. Um, that's true, Ifoma. It's actually good to see you this Sunday evening. The Northeast Development Commission has affirmed commitment to revamping and revitalizing the healthcare system in the region for effective and efficient service delivery. 
This came to fall when members of the Northeast Health Commissioners Forum paid a visit to the management of the commission. Tina Toro completes the story. Having held its inaugural meeting in Maiduguri, members of the Northeast Health Commissioners Forum drawn from the six states in the region were at the Northeast Development Commission to garner support in addressing significant health care challenges where they presented and communicated the managing director of the commission that will serve as a blueprint for intervention in healthcare service delivery. The forum identified areas of intervention to include human resource for health development to address shortage of personnel, infrastructural development, as well as provision of essentials and consumables, especially at the grassroots, improved access to quality antenatal care to reduce maternal mortality and strengthening neonatal health care services, among other things. The health sector in the Northeast is in a critical situation at the moment. Our region contributes heavily to these poor indices in Nigeria. And Nigeria, unfortunately, contributes 30% of all women who die in the world. Managing Director NEDC, Mohamed Goni Alkali, pledged the Commission's support, noting that the health sector is one of the areas most affected by insurgency, as the Commission is committed to revamping and revitalizing the sector. The most important thing which they mentioned today here is about capacity building, either for the doctors, nurses, the lab technician, and uh, any paramedical that need to be trained, we are there to intervene properly. The North East Health Commissioners Forum is collaborating with all stakeholders in ensuring adequate access to quality health care service delivery across the region. In May degree, Tina Turu, NTA News. Let's talk health now. The need for collaboration to address human resource deficit and other challenges in the treatment, management and prevention of stroke as well as other related ailments was the focus of an international workshop on human capacity development organized by the University of Meduguri in collaboration with the Walton Center NHS Foundation Trust and University of Liverpool, United Kingdom. Here again is Tina Toro with the rest of the story. This workshop with the team, Interdisciplinary Approach to Recent Advances in Stroke Neuroscience and Global Collaborative Network, which drew participants within Nigeria and the United Kingdom. The focus is on human resource development, taking advantage of innovations, as well as research with a view to curbing medical tourism. There's so much potential here and you've got so much equipment and enthusiasm. Um, it's fantastic to see. Um, and, and I think there's, there's that real opportunity there for us to, to work together. Some of the stuff or the instrument that we have here, I think is, you know, it can rub shoulders with the one in Europe. What we need is obviously manpower. Researches in that area of neuro-oncology is uh, less than 1% in Africa. So there is uh, a vital ground. Africa is a vital ground for oncology into that area. Chief Medical Director, University of Medjugorje Teaching Hospital, Professor Ahmed Ahidu stressed the commitment of the hospital to offering better healthcare services in line with global best practices. If we really want to achieve much, then we have to give the skill that is desired to our own staff. Stakeholders posit that establishing stroke care centers and increased awareness will help reduce cases of mortality. Stroke patients should be cared for in a stroke unit. What we have presently is majority of all our patients are being cared for on the general ward. We have a strategic role to play to in, in ensuring that we give the right information. The workshop is expected to reposition Nigeria's healthcare system for better service delivery. In Meduguri, Tina Toru, NTA News. If you're just joining us here on to Nationwide on the Nigerian Television Authority, let us at this point take a break, but Ifoma in Abuja will be back with more stories for us shortly. A good farmer is a craftsman of the highest order. It is said, great farmer, great nation, no farmer, no nation. Yes, let's set the ball rolling to build that great Nigeria where good... First trade is in a key in situation of the north and telling good governance, peace, security, and the need to forge a common ground for sustainable development are some of the ideas of the late premier of North 
of the North from what is then the result to be adopted and pursued by leaders as part of efforts to regain the lost glory of the region. This was during the 10th annual summit of the Memorial Lecture and Merit Awards held in Majibu, the domestic capital. Nina Gabba reports. The annual lecture organized by Borno State Government and Sir Amadou Bello Memorial Foundation has as its theme creating pathways for peace, tackling banditry and insurgency through good governance for sustainable development. Vice President Kashim Shatima, who was represented, commended the initiators of the foundation through which legacies of the late premier are passed on to the upcoming generation and urge all to be committed to adopting them for peace and development. Every strategy that can end violent crimes and conflicts between communities will be vigorously pursued by the administration. We must collectively work together in order to build a future that will work for generations yet and more. We have abdicated our responsibilities as agrarian people and waiting for handout from federal government. This narrative must change. And that is the way to tackle banditry insurgency through good governance. The great test thing we need to do is to start team together, align together, and work hard enough to catch up. Let me ask this for you. Examine the current challenges confronting the North and find urgent and lasting solutions. Whatever you will do, make sure that you secure the lives and property of the people, all other things become secondary. Any problem affecting the northern part of Nigeria is a problem for Nigeria as a whole. Four prominent Nigerians, late Professor Emeritus Umaru Shehu, Professor Adamu David Baike, Professor Deborah Enilo Ajakaye, and Aisha Muhammad Nahuchi, were presented with the Foundation's 2024 Merit and Lifetime Awards. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. Peaceful coexistence has again been identified as a fundamental precondition for the needed social economic development of the country. And so leaders at all levels, groups and individuals have therefore been urged to be just, selfless and ensure acts that may trigger unrest for the nation to survive and grow. These are some of the views of some re Nigerian residents in Biosa State while speaking on the significance of peace. Ibinimi Siptimi Yola reports. Absence of violent conflict and the presence of respect and understanding between people and communities are the two characteristics that define peace. That is why negotiations, compromise and cooperation among groups with different interests and viewpoints are frequently necessary to bring about peace in the society. Understanding this concept of peaceful coexistence underscores why nations of the world often do all within their power to promote acts that encourage healthy interpersonal relationships. Peace is the best attribute and characteristics we should ever look for if we are going to live well in a society that is diverse in different ways. It's only when I tolerate you, even if you go wrong, and maybe bring you back to me with love and tolerance that we can live together harmoniously. They emphasize the need for religious, traditional and political leaders to use their platforms and vintage positions as opinion influencers to ring on their congregants, subjects and followers to place loyalty to the nation. If I do what is right in my family, every family does the right thing you see that the society will be right. They condemned the killings and parts of the country as human life, they say, is sacred. They urge youths not to allow themselves to be used as agents of destabilization. Rather, young people should put to good use their energy and numerical strength for the advancement and well-being of the country. In Yenegua, Ebinimi Zitimiola, NTN News.